Happy holidays, everybody, and Tony here with a tribute to Just Like Old Times from Where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego, which aired on November 19, 1995 on Fox Kids. This was directed by Joe Baruso, and it was written by David Ehrman. Ah, Carmen Sandiego. This master thief slash edutainment icon slash anti-heroine always had a very special place in my heart ever since I was a very little boy. Before I encountered the animated TV series, I encountered Carmen Sandiego in a multitude of activity books, computer games, and game shows. Most notably, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego in terms of computer games, and Where in Time is Carmen Sandiego in terms of game shows. Out of all these installments starring the eponymous anti-heroine, I definitely enjoyed playing Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego. And I do have to apologize to my viewers for mixing up the animated series name Where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego with the other installments name where in the world is Carmen Sandiego, as the latter title is not only the name of the computer game, but also another TV show that is completely not related to the animated series. So Carmen Sandiego fans, I really hope you accept my apology in the last bit of my previous tribute video. Going back to my memories of Carmen Sandiego, I definitely enjoyed playing Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego. After every required activity that I did during my computer class, I would always ask my instructor, let alone demand my instructor, to let me play Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego. I had so much fun with this game thanks to finding out clues, traveling to different locales in the world, finding out details about the criminal of the hour, and most of all, nabbing that said criminal thanks to Acme's super detectives. But I'm not here to talk about the computer game. As you noticed, I'm here to talk about the animated series and its Christmas special. One notable feature of this animated series was its opening theme based on Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's Singt dem Großer Basser Lieder from his opera Die Entführung aus dem Sarail. I definitely loved this piece of music ever since I was a very young lad because of the use of percussions as well as the woodwinds and strings all coming together to create such a powerful experience and when you back it up with the chorus, you know that any rendition of Singt dem Großer Basser Lieder will definitely be worthwhile. In fact, the chorus of the Janissaries, aka Singt dem Großer Basser Lieder, is that one piece of music from Die Entführung aus dem Sarail that I always look forward to, aside from Constanze's grand aria, Martin alla Arten. Where this theme song is concerned, they implemented some pop beats as well as lyrics that detail us, the viewers, of what the show is about. And I do consider Where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego's to be one of my most favorite animated series theme songs of all time. Going to this particular episode, we are introduced to teenage sleuths Ivy and Zach spending their holidays ice skating at Rockefeller Center. While Ivy is an absolute queen on the ice, Zach, although he listens to his motivational records via tape, is not so fortunate. That is until they have a call from the chief, who is not played by Lynn Thigpen, but voiced by Roger Bumpus, stating that Carmen Sandiego about to steal a transmission tower. As what any hardcore Carmen Sandiego fan would expect, the chase ensues, with Ivy and Zack on the prowl, until they reach a cave, and just as Ivy and Zack slip down, Carmen sardonically remarks that she gives them a 5 for style, but 10 for persistence. The chase further ensues, until she gets away. Ivy and Zack manage to escape that death-defying feat of trying to capture Carmen while she is submerging by a submarine in a cave of ice water, but they weren't as fortunate. We then head back to Acme headquarters where Ivy and Zack are warming up, but poor Chief has a virus and even states that the transmission tower is used 
for gathering various signals from TVs to phones to even computers, which then make Ivy and Zach wonder why would Carmen need a transmission tower in the first place. And after, and then after that bit of sleuth work, we see Zach printing out a long list of gifts that he mockingly states to Ivy that she should buy those gifts for him until Ivy wraps him up in that said paper. And this also leads to one of the funniest lines when they get into the elevator that Zach says that when he ends up accidentally cutting himself from the paper that he was wrapped in, he says that he hates paper cuts. In Vile's headquarters, we see Manny, the technician, operating on the chief, who then recognizes Carmen and reminisces all the times that they had together. Even Carmen states that she doesn't want any uber elaborate schemes, but she'd like to just spend this time between her and the chief to have a little bit of a chat and a catch up. Speaking of catch up, the chief even reminisces how Carmen managed to nab the other thieves and beat them to their own game while attempting to rob something from the Santa Lucia festival in Sweden. And just by looking at that particular moment, I kind of had that feeling of nostalgia in me because five years ago, I did spend my Christmas in Sweden and heard a lot about the Santa Lucia festival that would be a tradition every Christmas. However, there is no time for further reminiscing as the chase continues to ensue, with the first clue coming from Acme headquarters. It consists of a doorknob, a measuring stand, an eye, and someone saying the letter ah. Carmen is able to decipher that this is Handel's Messiah, and we are treated to a nice animation of George Frederick Handel conducting the hallelujah, which I thought was just absolutely fun. It turns out that this particular word puzzle signifies that the original manuscript of Handel's Messiah is at the British National Museum in London. Carmen suits up, heads to London to nab the score until she's about to be stopped by Acme's agents in London. Unfortunately for the London Acme agents, Carmen escapes especially when she sings Hallelujah, Hallelujah from Handel. And I thought that that was an absolutely fun moment. And she was able to sing that in such a feisty that I was almost rolling on the floor with laughter. The chief's condition has been getting a lot worse as they end up having another clue. This time it's a witch. And this witch is not from Salem, but she is La Befana. In fact, in Italy, instead of Santa Claus, La Befana comes to deliver gifts and goodies to all the little boys and little girls who have been so good this year. Piecing together what all this could mean, especially with the cross-references of children feeding pigeons in Portugal and children putting up shoes for Père Noël in France, this means that there is a canon in the Castel San Angelo in Rome. Carmen then proceeds to have another death-defying challenge by nabbing one of the canons, all while Acme's agents in Italy try to nab her. And the funny thing about one of the agents is that he is actually Mexican, not Italian. So instead of him saying amigos, he should have been saying amici, which I thought was kind of unusual, but it was really fun seeing this particular agent and his colleagues try to capture Carmen only for her to once again escape. But there's still one more item that Carmen is hot on the heels on, as revealed by a clue from Ivy and Zack stating that she is on thin ice and through a word puzzle of an O comma 10 plus a cannon and something that explodes, Carmen and her cronies then decipher that it is O Tannenbaum, a German expression for O Christmas tree. Carmen not wanting to acquire any of the Christmas trees in either Germany or even Washington DC, she decides that it's best for her and her cronies to jet off to Rockefeller Center in New York, only to find herself at the hands of Ivy, Zach, 
and the other Acme agents who are anticipating her arrival. Crafty as ever, Carmen then jets off with a Christmas tree. But Zack has another plan up his sleeves as he has a tracking device straight for Carmen where they're going to head over to her hiding spot. Carmen's celebration seems to go full swing until the Acme agents arrive, capture the cronies, but once again, Carmen makes a getaway. However, she has left some presents for the Acme agents. It turns out to be Carmen dolls, who state that the only Carmen they'll ever have is this particular doll, as the dolls greet them, Merry Christmas. Even Ivy was rather touched by this warm yet mischievous gesture. At the same time, Carmen exclaims a Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Furthermore, Zack was able to cure the chief from his virus and as fit as a fiddle. Sure, the chief stated that he had a weird dream of seeing Carmen and a witch and all these crazy happenings and even asked, where am I Auntie M? Which I thought was just absolutely hilarious. After Carmen craftily left her presence to the Acme agents and even made another getaway, she has another another verbal sparring match with the player. Although the player seemed rather sore that Carmen got away again, she then retorts by stating that he dare not be so sore during the holidays. After that particular banter, we are then treated to the credits where we see Christmas celebrations from all over the world, which I thought was a nice and lovely touch to make the holiday seasons Carmen San Diego style come to full fruition and full swing with a lot of heart and of course a lot of fun. Speaking of heart and fun, I thoroughly enjoyed this particular Christmas episode. There was a lot of laughs, a lot of action, suspense, thrills, and it definitely left me on the edge of my seat, especially when it came to the heists Carmen got herself into. Whether it be attempting to steal the score of Handel's Messiah at the British National Museum of London, or even hoist one of the cannons of Castel Sant'Angelo, I was definitely, definitely enthralled watching Carmen San Diego do her thing. This never left me bored, and it left me thoroughly excited to see what was coming next. And speaking of laughs, it was always fun watching the chief get himself into this particular predicament, as well as the cronies try to find out what all of these word puzzles actually mean, only for Carmen to time and time again trump them by guessing the right answer to those riddles. This, along with the entirety of this particular animated show, was backed up by some very fine performances. Yes, we had Jennifer Hale as the sassy, level-headed, and absolutely gorgeous and intellectual Ivy, Scott Menville as the amusing, clever, and crafty Zack, Roger Bumpus as the absolutely hilarious chief, although if you ask me, I would have loved to have Lynn Thigpen do the role of the chief because she was not only the chief I grew up with, but one that I associated with so much because of her commandingly strong screen presence. But at the end of the day, beggars can't be choosers, and I still enjoyed Roger Bumpus's portrayal of the chief and his spin on this particularly comical figure. However, the real star of this particular Christmas episode, as well as the entire series, was none other than Rita Moreno herself. I'm not just saying this because she celebrated her birthday about nine or 10 days ago. I'm saying this because she was able to find a great balance between Carmen's sense of mischief and adventure with being such a sultry and sexy character that I definitely loved seeing on screen. I am confident that all of my fellow musical fans will know Mrs. Moreno as Anita from West Side Story. Her penchant for playing all these spicy, sexy, and vibrant women of Latina origin has certainly, has certainly put her on the map in the acting world. And hearing her as Carmen Sandiego is an absolute treat. She was able to find that wonderful balance between being mischievous and a trickster with being this 
sensual woman without making her too much of a femme fatale. In fact, the biggest mistake when it comes to playing Carmen Sandiego is making her too much of a nasty femme fatale. She's not necessarily evil, but she really knows how to play mind games to those who dare challenge her. And Rita Moreno's take on Carmen Sandiego gives us, the viewers and listeners, a lot of pleasure when it comes to how Carmen plays her games along with her pawns as well as those who dare challenge her. And I salute Rita Moreno for a job splendidly done. Another facet about another facet about this show that I really liked was having Ivy and Zach siblings because they demonstrate a familial closeness with each other as well as showing us that just because you have a girl protagonist and a guy protagonist doesn't mean they have to be together. Making Ivy and Zach siblings in fact shows that you can have a strong platonic relationship. And they do it exceedingly, especially thanks to Jennifer Hale and Scott Menville giving off such fine chemistry, working off of each other and making such fine magic as the Sleuth siblings. And for those of you who caught Just Like Old Times from Where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego, what'd you think of it? Did you have a lot of fun with this particular Christmas episode? Did you really enjoy all the references and the clues that you managed to immerse yourselves into? Was there a clue that you found most interesting? Or did you feel like there was something that didn't really hold up. Comment below and let me know. Well, that's it for my tribute to Just Like Old Times from Where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego. Tune in much later for my first live action show Christmas tribute where I take a look at Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Christmas episode, I'm Dreaming of a White Ranger. So until then, happy holidays everybody!